So, let me jump down. Okay. Where it's 9, 16, we can do this. Okay. I wrote up here three, three lines of the fence. I don't think I've gone over that with any of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of time, but we can do it. Okay. I would know this. I'm going to say that again. I would know this. What about the right? I would definitely know. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So we have our, our lines of defense. We have number one, our first line of defense. It's barriers. What are some examples of barriers? Skin. Perfect, skin. What else? Uh, mucous membrane. Mucus. Vomiting. Resident bacteria. Tears. Etc. Okay. So those are our barriers. The whole role of barriers is to keep things out. You don't have to fight anything if you keep it out. You don't have to fight any of those pathogens as long as they're out. They're fine. So barriers is all about keeping things out. And that's our first line. Then we go to our second line of defense, which is non-specific. Now there is four in particular I want to cover, because they're the most important ones, in my opinion, but Okay, so we have, first we have fever. Fever is just the body heating up the kill cells. The body is aware that it's going to be killing some of its own cells because heat doesn't discriminate, it kills all the cells. But the body's okay to do that. It's willing to sacrifice a few of our cells to kill all the bad things. So fever, the whole point of fever, it's actually, it's our body self-imposing, heating up the body, trying to kill off the cells. You look confused. Did Brother Ray say that wasn't the case yesterday? About... I think he said it, it hasn't been scientifically proven yet, but that was what, like, that was the... Oh, just the heating up of those cells. Yeah. No, that might be. I thought that's what he said. Was that, accurate. That's not know. heating up the kill cells? Cool. Never mind. <laughs> if he said something different, you could tell me. No, I don't remember what it was. That's all I remember him saying. And then we didn't talk he, about it he said that it was the most agreed upon yeah. idea. Okay. But it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> you can let me know. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but fever, that, that's the goal uh, is to kill. Because if you cool cells down or cool things down, you actually kind of can store them. Like, you can store, like, for example, people store eggs and sperm all the time in freezers. You cool things down, so the body can't really go that method. But if you heat things up, it breaks down proteins and the like. The cells it starts causing things to be messed up. So fever kills cells. Next one is inflammation, which you have the basophils release histamine. Histamine is the chemical signal that causes inflammation. Inflammation is just when blood vessels open up to allow more blood to the area. Why would that be good? Because in blood we have white blood cells that help with defense. We have nutrients that can help you know, support, heal the area. So inflammation is just trying to get as much blood to that area as possible. Again, it's not specific because it doesn't really matter what, what got in. It just inflames the area no matter what. Complement proteins. I like to think of them as like a needle, and think of like bacteria or viruses as like a wire balloon. It pokes holes and cell just falls apart. So it pokes holes in those membranes of those bacteria or viruses and falls apart. Macrophages, 
when we talked about this word before, means big eater. And they're just big white blood cells are floating around, and when they hit something they don't recognize, they engulf it. Which is going along with this phagocytosis idea. They engulf it, break it down using uh, lysosomes. Just break it down. So I know you said it two seconds ago, but I forgot what you said complement proteins do. They're, they're like needles. They poke okay. holes in membranes. <laughs> they poke holes in membranes, and the cells just fall apart. So, any questions about these three or four? I mean, um, is inflammation typically like when you get an infected cut? Inflammation can occur then. Yeah. Can it happen like when you have a cold inside of you, like your stuff inside get inflamed? It can. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it definitely can. Yeah. Yeah, I'm struggling. I forgot what the basophils and histamine means up there. Basophils produce histamine. Histamine is the chemical that signals inflammation. Okay. Got it. So basophil is the type of white blood cell that releases a chemical that causes inflammation in Because inflammation is the idea of blood vessels opening up and putting blood in the area. Okay. So. <coughs> that's how. Third line, specific, we have B cells, and we have T cells. B cells, big thing is they produce antibodies. Now all antibodies are very, 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 very specific. They can only attach to one type of cell or virus they can only shut down one type of cell of virus. So B cells have to be producing all these different antibodies for all these new viruses that we get exposed to and stuff. Does that make sense? So it's very, very unique. It's the same idea with blood typing. You know, the A antibody cannot bind with B ever. It always binds with A. Same idea. It always binds with the same thing. Now there's three types of T cells you guys need to know about. We've talked about the first one, which is cytotoxic. If we break this word down, what do you think it means? Cell. Cell what? So toxic, something that, that kills you, something that's bad. So, cytotoxic. There's two things. Cytotoxic T cells can directly kill bacteria. They can go and kill it just directly. And then cell killing, they, they do. They can just do their job, kill the, the bacteria. But they also do something very unique. So if a bunch of bad guys broke into our house, and they're all stealing stuff out of the bedroom, and I was like, okay, I know there's a bunch of bad guys in that bedroom. Instead of taking the effort and trying to pull, and get rid of the bad guys, you know, pull them out one by one and go in there, instead I just toss, toss a grenade into the room, shut the door, blows up. Yes, my room blew, blew up too. Like, you know, my bedroom's gone, whatever. But I got rid of all the bad guys. Cytotoxic T cells do the same thing. When one of our cells gets infected by a virus, instead of taking the effort to get all the virus out, it just kills our own cell. Just destroys it. Because that kills everything that's inside, all the viruses on the inside. Because the concept is, we can always build a new cell. Let's just build a new cell. It's gonna be easier just to get rid of all all those viruses, all the bad, and just fill a new, new cell. So, real life example when this is happening, when you get a sore throat, all the cells on the lining of your throat are being killed. Because they're all being infected, and so cytotoxic T cells are coming along and just killing them. And so that's why your throat is sore. Cool. So. Interesting. The next type. Helper T cells. Helper, like the name says, their whole point is to help stimulate or signal B cells to do their job, which is to produce the antibodies. So that's all the helper T cells do. They help signal the B cells. Okay. 
Then you have memory T cells, which you also have memory B cells, but we're going to talk mainly about memory T cells. Memory T cells, their job is to remember stuff. So you get chicken pox once, why don't you get it again? It's because you have built memory T cells towards it. Those memory T cells are able to recognize something and immediately tell the B cells what antibodies to make. Oh, I, re I remember this enemy. I know exactly what we need to make. B cells make this. <coughs> That's what the B cells make. The right antibody is gone. Destroyed. Okay, so if something gets through the first line of defense, what happens? The second line of defense. If something gets through the second line of defense, what happens? That's when we start to feel sick. But yes, yeah. That's this time period. Between two and three is when you'll start. Because once you start having a fever, you start feeling sick. So it's between two and three. So if it gets through number one, goes to number two. It gets to number two, goes to number three. It gets to number three, you're dead. The virus has beaten you and got to take over your organs, shut them down. Dead. Is stomach acid a barrier or not specific? It's a barrier. Okay. Yeah. Because it's preventing things from getting into like your bloodstream and stuff. Okay. So if it's gotten past the barrier, then that, does it, it's in our bloodstream? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? 